Uh, hi to everyone watching on YouTube. This is the Arf Day Science Tidyverse Docs Book Club. We're currently running through Per, and today we're running through Adverbs. Are uh, you okay? You guys are all um, you're seeing my screen, right? Yeah, I can yes. see it. Cool. Um, so yeah, actually, like before, so well, they give this like definition of what an adverb is. Um, I guess it's just like you know, an adverb in English language modifies some verb and. You can think of functions as verbs, like functions do things. So an adverb in this case is a function that modifies the action of a function. So takes an existing function and like does something to it so that you get a slightly different output or maybe quite a big or like quite a huge difference in output depending on which adverb you use and uh, which function you use it on. Um, the ones we'll be going through today are these guys, so safely, possibly, quietly, insistently, slowly, negate, compose, partial, and auto-browse. Sadly, it took quite a while to press, so these two in particular, I think we want to maybe roll over to next week, because I started putting stuff together for them, and then I realized like they were too new for me to really do them justice. Um, but we will have a look like what they are, a couple of examples. Um, and some of maybe the like an idea i think advanced r has some good stuff on this but i didn't have time to to go back and get it um but so personally i i've always thought like safely possibly like they're pretty useful um i've never actually used them that much um but i was wondering for you guys like are there any of these adverbs that like you do use or you have used before and you know if you if you do which ones and like which is most useful kind of thing a one word adverb uh to in answer to that sadly sadly <laughs> none <laughs> Yeah, no, that's cool. I, I actually think, so along with what you guys are doing last week, vector transformations like accumulate and reduce uh, and some of the list C stuff and flat and like, I think these are really useful. Um, and these are one of like the primary reasons that I want to do this club is that I didn't, I knew most, well, I knew of them, not all of them, but I knew of them, but I never really used them much. Um, but okay, so... Uh, the first one, um, I kind of rejigged the order from, see the per docs where they were um, in like auto browse, compose and stuff, because I thought it was these guys are a natural grouping and they're a bit more close to what probably most people use them for. Um, so I, re I rejigged them a little bit. And Safely's job, um, well, okay, let's start with what happens when you don't use Safely. So you've got this list and you want to like map over it to get the logarithm of each of these. So you get those, um, I suppose this is log two, I should have done log two. Um, but anyway, yeah, you get those results and it outputs a list because you asked for map. Like you could have done map double or you could have done whatever for this and you'd get the result that you want. Um, but like, let's say, you've got a long list and you can't really audit everything that's in that list easily. Um, wasn't kind of like nested structure or just, I don't know, some funniness. Well, if you try to do the same thing here, well, you'll get an error um, because the like the logarithm of error or any string that can't be coerced to a number is, is not well-defined. Um, and I guess when you look at something like this, it's like so what like who cares that there's an error it's, it's really obvious what the error is and like how to fix it um but often in the past i found i'll be mapping over something that calls an api um and if that api just like normally works fine and i haven't had to like write the results into immediately or whatever um then i'll just maybe be a bit lazy and use map um but if that's like a really long list and each one, you know, takes a little bit of time. 
you don't want to map all the way through that list. So like if you've got a thousand elements and they each take a second, you wouldn't want to find out, you know, you, you had an error on index position 99A because that would be really annoying because you'd lose all the work you did um, prior to that. So you'd have to run through the API again. And if you're paying for the API, you have to use like use credits or use compute or whatever. And you'd have to get those results again. And like, there are other ways to deal with this. Like you don't have to use map like this and you don't have to not write your results into immediately and stuff. Um, but what um what safely does is it gives you a way of still using map and not having to do anything else like at least not yet not having to do much other thinking um and safely will would well you use you'll use safely on the log function so or whatever function that you want to map over stuff um and then you can get the results on that vector we had before with your safe log function and when you do this, like when you map over it, you're returning a list now. Uh, well, you always are when you're using map, um, but you're returning a list that has a new structure. And that structure is not the same, like you see as this. This was the original structure where you've got, okay, the first element in the list, and that just has one element inside it. And the second element in the list, and that has one element inside it. Now you've got the first element in the list, um, and inside that, it has its first element, right? Because it's got two different elements. So it's got the error and the result. Um, and the first one is the result. And when the result, is, like when the operation was a success, so when map tried to go over your, your vector, your list with your safe function, and it was able to get the result or a good result, like the function passed, well, result will contain the result and then error will contain null. Um, and then if you get down to the point or when we get down to the point uh, that it would have failed, you can see here we've got a null in the result and we've got some stuff in the error. Um, and gladly, we had this other element in our list, which is 24 um, coming after error. And we still got the result for 24. Um, and error again is null. So that's quite helpful. Um, it's potentially very helpful to save you uh, like a lot of time when you're doing stuff. Um, but what it, I guess what it does, um, what it does introduce is a little bit of trickiness. Um, perhaps like you see this structure of the, the results that we were just going through. It's like, this is fundamentally a different type of result to work with now. You can't just take the output of result and straight away just like mutate that into your other your data frame or like whatever you were feeding into the map function to iterate over um because you've got this split now of results and errors um what this does mean is that because they're like once you've used safely um on map you get this output of result and error is you can't use it obviously with like the map double and the map in functions because they they will return a vector of the type that you've specified by map um, whereas this thing is gonna return a two-part list um so there are some nice like functions in, you, don't, you don't have to like i guess going way back to the start of when we started per like we were looking at all those horrible for loops that you had to write so if you got like this thing out and you had to write some grim loop saying like, oh, every time the result is blah, 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 and populate a list, well, it wouldn't be very like per friendly or like that wouldn't be the per way of doing things. So per has a function for lists that it transposes them. Um, so before we had uh, like kind of two separate lists of five in here. So like a list of five each with a list of two. Um, but now we have two lists of five. So before we had five lists of two, now we have two lists of five. So your result, like inside here now, there's like a result of, it's a list, but it's basically a vector of numbers. Um, now, well, sorry, it's not yet actually, it's still a list um, and it's still a list because in here you've got null and you can't have a vector of like 
doubles or numerics and then have a null in there, um, which is like a potential problem. Thankfully, there like, there is a solution. Um, but then let's see elsewhere, you've got like, you've got your results list and you've got your errors list. Um, so you could you could put those errors or where there was an error. You, you If the errors are more interesting, you might want to look at them, especially if you're doing something important. Um, but they could easily go into a logging file or a logging data frame or just as a column in your data set. So do do a little bit of cheating here because um, I used a tidy R function to unnest them. Um, but once you transpose, uh, you can turn your results into a tibble and then you can unnest the results. Um, so what you'll probably like notice here, um, and it's a bit of a spoiler alert, but this, this results data frame is um, is not that good because we've got four entries. So we've got one, two, three, four, and our list had five things in it. Um, you see here, we had five things. So our resulting data frame has its dimensions have changed, which that could have like really annoying consequences um, down the line. Um, we'll look in the next, no, let's go through it now actually. So in here in safely, uh, as a spoiler, you've got this, this argument here otherwise, which is, um, which is in some of the other functions, which is when we actually look at it. But you can you can prevent this being a big problem with otherwise. Um, but okay, in my mind, I was thinking like, well, what base R function is safely kind of similar to? Um, like, does it call to mind anything for you guys? Like there's a function out there that you're used to using in base R um, that works similar to this. Ah, okay. Um, so transpose is now superseded. Oh, um, so if I go back up, let's, let's have a look. Um, let's read in all this stuff because you don't want to be using out of date stuff. Have I stored the right per on here? Because I was, I have a burner laptop because my laptop actually broke. Um, ah, yeah. Oh, whoops. Uh, so superseded, yeah. It still, it still works. I guess it's yeah. just uh, uh No, that's good though. That's good the development team. I was just as you were doing that, I was like, "Oh, let me look at the pull up the help article for transpose," and I noticed the superseded badge. Yeah, so I I actually didn't look at the help of transpose. I was just looking in um what they call like safely and in the docs they say like yeah I use transpose um. I guess that's a problem of like documentation not keeping up with change, but that would be a nice little, they're probably aware of it, but an issue on per, that might be a nice one to say. But if we do, so we take our results, um, we've got them like that. Let's see if we, what if I list transpose, do we get the same? Yeah, it seems to get like roughly the same thing. Um, but okay, that's good to know. I wonder if there's any, yeah, it's just like doing the same thing as the T function, right? Um, that function, but then what's the difference? In here? Yeah, okay, you've got quite a few different um arguments that go into list transpose. Okay, nice. Uh, well, I'll leave that one in. So, so Jack, you, you were saying earlier that uh, for, for if I got you right, that for safely uh, the function well, so if if you're iterating, um, iteratively applying a function to elements uh, of, of of a list, then you can't use the type the typed versions of map, right? Because um, Mm -hmm. The underlying function is going to return a kind of a a, a a list that has two components, right? Yeah. Okay. So that like map double always returns a vector of doubles, and map character always returns a vector of characters. Um. So if you wanted like type 
uh, stability, if I could put it that way, with respect to the results, and you'd have to write that into your underlying function f. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of maybe getting ahead of the game of like why some of the later functions that we'll kind of look at today might be useful, uh, like the compose and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think you 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 would that's kind of what you'd want to do. Um, or you could you could do some manual stuff. Um, but yeah, what say what safely is perfect or like what say no, it's perfect. Its purpose is to stop you like your pipelines dying. But what it's what its big effect is or what its big change is that it does put out that two list structure which prevents you from using um those functions with it. But we're going to look at like the next function, possibly. And that function kind of does the same thing, but it, you can use that with map double and map, et cetera. So like when you don't want to be dealing with the errors or you don't want to like log the errors or anything, you're probably going to end up using possibly. Um, but we'll uh, we'll look at that in a minute. So I think I know you guys going too fast this morning when I was preparing, but or it's coming next. But like the the thing I was saying here that's problematic is like you've lost some rows uh, or you've lost one row. But if that was a bigger data frame or it's important information that you know you've got other columns in here and you don't just want to lose the rows where um, you had an error in in like the the call to the API or the call to a function for whatever reason that would be bad. Um, and the reason that happened is because there's this null in result, um, which we could have present prevented by a different keyword. Um, but we will look at that in, in a sec. Um, but so on to the questions. Um, the base R function, like I was thinking, I was kind of, and it says this in the docs, like try or like lots of languages have their try functions, right? Um, but it's like, try and do this and if not get an error and then like carry on anyway um use cases for safely uh i don't know if i have any off the top of my head beyond like pinging an api that's why i've had the big pain point before i remember once i waited like all day for um like models running via an api and then it fails later on. And it was like the first time I'd ever done that sort of thing. And I just lost the whole day and had to go back through it. And that's happened, more happens in Python when you're using something like a language model or you're classifying like a language model that has a tokenizer and the tokenizer does some stuff and it puts out some tensors, right? They're all the same size. Everything's fine, like it works, but if you happen to have a string in there that gets coerced into an empty string by the tokenizer um, when it trims the white space or whatever, or it lowers or it removes some stuff, like then you've got an NA and the model just breaks. Like it just says, no, I can't deal with that. Um, and if you haven't like wrapped that in something like a safely, it's the same thing as calling an API. So you lost all of the classifications uh, that you've done previously um but okay uh this is why i didn't change it yet so there's this otherwise um argument in safely and uh, i didn't give all the arguments in safely kind of to have a little spoiler <laughs> not to have too many spoilers but possibly um but stuff happens right so like here good stuff happens you get your result here good stuff here good stuff and here bad stuff happens um so there's like this argument in um, in safely it's otherwise. So, what like I don't know what what would you guys think is like if you didn't want this to happen later on, like you lose rows of your data frame. What kind of thing can you put in otherwise to make sure that this never happens when you do this? If you just add an NA value, does that already do the trick? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you say like, um, don't do null, and like normally I'd always think of like null and NA being quite similar in my head lazily. Um, but if you say, yeah, uh, otherwise set it to an NA, um, then you'd find that you'll still have the same amount. Um, 
which is a good thing to get ahead of because you'll probably i we'd probably only make that mistake once um it's just you probably don't want it to be um like a costly mistake and i suppose this is a completely open question that i don't really know the answer to um is like you've got this structure and you want to deal with it like i look at that and think well i want a data frame where i've got a column of results and a column of errors and that's just because i kind of everything i do is in data frames um but does that scream to anyone else that you should be wrangling this in a different way like maybe you shouldn't use tibble i don't know because that puts some constraints on the columns um but yeah is there anything you guys think of when you see this data structure like is there something else you'd want to do with it honestly lists make me very uncomfortable so i'd probably just do exactly the same um but Ditto. yeah <laughs> but there are languages that work mostly with lists right so like i don't know there's probably people who can like deal with it um <laughs> but they're just so untidy <laughs> yeah i mean python you python has a really nice thing like list comprehension um and you're always like filling empty lists and it's always dealing with lists like it's actually often nicer than dealing with like pandas data frames but yeah in r it's just i don't know i get the same icky feeling whenever like a list comes along and um, what what were you about to say after no, no, no. I was, uh, I was going to say, but, but yeah, I said to what Sarah said, ditto. Uh, yeah, I, I, I feel kind of uncomfortable with lists. And uh, no, I, I, I honestly, I haven't found myself in the situation where I've needed this kind of construct. I mean, maybe there are cases where it could have been useful, but it, it's not something I rub up against uh, on, on a daily basis. Yeah, cool. Well, let's hope if you ever do, like safely just comes to mind. Um, exactly. Yeah, or possibly. Um, so uh what well, possibly does, right? So let's did I post the actual documentation in safely? No, I didn't. So let, let's compare. Um, but in here in safe in safely, we've got oops, wrapper function to capture errors, right? Um, so I'm actually just gonna put this in for the document that lives on because it's actually quite nice to have this. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's go to down here. Notation. This, um, but yeah, so like this one wraps a function to capture errors. And then as you see here, possibly wraps a function to return a value instead of an error. Um, so yeah, just modify that function so that it behaves slightly differently. Um, and that modification is to put a default value inputted by like the, um, the otherwise argument whenever an error occurs. Uh, and they do like, they do work quite similarly. Um, it's just, yeah, they don't, they have different outputs. Um, what it will either do is, oh, I didn't mean to, um, I meant to edit this out. Um, but yeah, what it will do is actually not a, a shortened list. It will return a list the same length as before. Um, it's just now it will have a null instead of like breaking. Um, and if you use otherwise, you can use like NA underscore real underscore, or just probably use NA. Um, and now, um, now you've got an NA in here. You don't have null. So this this is the exact same syntax as you'd use if you're doing safely. Um, and that does mean like if you use um Let's see to tidy the stuff, and um, you'll get a nice. Wait, what? Did I not update this? Um, it should have. Uh, I think I've, I've just not saved, but what would have actually happened to this? Oh, no, okay, sorry. Yeah, if you in here, I didn't use otherwise equals. Um, 
So that means when you use list C, you get this thing where it's um it's a different length. But if we get this back in our really quick, let me just to confirm. This one, if we just add um otherwise equals MA, then instead of getting this four length list um where the null is gotten rid of, we've got this five length list where the null is in an A. And that's like the same thing as we saw in in safely. Um yeah, so I was so like I guess this is actually a spoiler to one of the questions. Um, but this does mean that you can use stuff like map double. Um, so if we get this, uh, I was actually guessing this, but I'm pretty sure it does. Um, oh no, you can't wait that way. Yeah, sorry, you can. Um, so it returns a vector. And then, of course, you can't use list C because list C expects um, lists. But this will work. So it, you've got your double vector um, instead of having, like, your list like this. Uh, and you can see, I think that's pretty nice. Like, just saves you a step or makes it easier to turn that into like i don't know say like oh can you not oh, i don't know um it's a quick side note that doesn't really have to do anything with per so is there, is there a reason why you're using the the tidyverse pipe and not the base r ty uh, pipe <laughs> yeah that's just like i don't know old habits die hard oh okay um, yeah i also i mean there are things like or at least when i looked into it there are, there were still things like it was much easier to sh say if you had another argument here like x equals i don't know st stuff like you didn't used to be able to do that with the base pipe i think you can now um, mm -hmm. but it's an underscore instead yeah, of the dot you do something like that. But I was just, when I just saw there was stuff like that, I just thought, I'm not going to change now. And now it's, I don't know if it's a year later, but it's, it's something like that. And it's also good change. for backwards compatibility. If some like someone were consuming this and had a, an older version of R that didn't have the native pipe. But, yeah. Yeah. I, I also, I type it. Like, I don't use the control shift M, which apparently is bonkers because then you don't get the space. But... <laughs> I actually feel like it's faster. Um, it's probably not. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I, I think probably everyone should use the things if they're learning now. But like Arthur says, especially if you, or if you're, I'm often working on like code bases that have got code from like five, six years ago where they all just use pipe, um, like the old, the Magritte pipe. So I don't, I, yeah, just have it. Um, I will Jack, change. Really Quick question, if I may. Um, would you mind going back to your um, uh, R Studio? Yeah. Um, so in in the the very first little block, you're starting on line one fifty five. So that you're dropping the NA there, or, or so you're dropping the list element that has has a null, but list can have null elements, right? But it is it yeah. must be named is it is the list c that's dropping the null for you yeah i think it's list c um, okay yeah combines into a vector right so it's um okay got it doing some stuff here and the vector can't have like multiple you can have a vector of all nulls i guess um but it it does this thing where it gets rid of the nulls for you um but that's why it's cool if you use this one it won't do it but that's the same behavior for possibly that allows you to use this instead, um, is the otherwise. Possibly uh, seems a lot nicer to use, or at least a lot more ergonomic. I mean, provided that, I mean, I, I don't know if someone, someone has come up with a, a, a nice, tidy way to do this, or if this is even possible, but um, so it, it seems like um, safely would be really useful if you didn't have a means of logging errors and you wanted to look back at the errors and understand what went wrong. Uh, like let's say for your API call example, right? So maybe somehow you're getting the, you know, HTTP 
you know, um, uh, uh, code um, or and or like some message that's emitted by the, the API endpoint. But I wonder if you could achieve the same if you just used like possibly and you had some means within your function to use like a logging function, like a log log for R, which I've never used actually, but it sounds hugely interesting. So I don't know if there's like a way to have both best of both worlds. Um, anyway, nothing we need to resolve here, but just kind of a passing thought. Yeah, well, I mean, so if you, as in like be able to get that nice tidy vector out and deal with the other stuff in a separate way. Yeah, I think you could, and you could write something. I don't know, I don't know anything, anything I don't know anything that exists because there's also quietly that we're going to look at next, but quietly does a different thing. It's more similar to safely, but with added things it can capture. Um, but you can, you can combine them. Um, we'll look later at perhaps some of the ones. Well, I'll have a look. Uh, I'll zoom out to this later on. Um, oops. The zoom controls are so janky. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you could you could write something to do that. What I was thinking for safely is, um, and it, I think it says this in the doc somewhere or in some other material I was reading about it earlier, is just if you're sending something out to a user, you might be a lot more interested in seeing what messages or errors the user gets from the stuff you're doing. Like if you're mapping over some stuff that's sending stuff outwards, um, so you might you might use safely then because you'll really care about the errors. Um, but I, I'm kind of the same experience wise. I like haven't had to deal with like sending stuff out to use as much. Um, so concrete use cases, um, well, concrete, yeah, one or the other. I'm not really sure. Like, I feel like I'd use possibly for basically everything um, at the start, at least just because it's, like I normally don't mind the reason the error happened um, or like the messages you get back about the error. But I suppose if that were important, like you're hitting an API and you've got different types of errors like rate limits or response limits, you might want to know when you're hitting which one. I guess with Safely as well, you can do other stuff based on the error that it catches. Um, but yeah, I don't know if, if anything comes to mind for you guys about like concretely why you might use safely say over possibly. No, not really. I, I might might have the same preferences as you. As you. I, I, I might I might adopt safely over possibly if I cared a lot about error messages perhaps that were getting captured in the, the um, that error column or that L error um, list. Yeah, I, I think there's there's definitely stuff we won't know yet just having not used them much that probably someone's going to look at this and be like, oh, it's obvious why you'd like to use this one over this one. Um, but it, it definitely doesn't seem immediately obvious. Um, but okay, so on to quietly. Um, so wrap a function to capture side effects. So safely captures like the results and the errors and um, possibly, and it, you know, it keeps going safely, possibly keeps going safely, but it doesn't keep its errors, but quietly you can use to get the result and all the side effects, but not the errors. If I remember, I'm pretty sure it's not the errors, um, but that's like, as we'll see, print is a side effect. Like it's not the return value of a function. Um, and a side effect is just anything other than the return value of a function, like roughly. Um, this warning here that's written inside this function, like that's a side effect. Um, you might have something like message in here. Um, and then I've also got like the function generates an error um, if some condition is is met um, and what you'll see is like for this function f because i could just not think of a different name uh and i think i use this from the examples um but it prints out it says like okay you your input was minus two um 
And there's actually a warning, as you see, it's come from this line. It says, well, like your integer is lower than zero, like that's bad. Um, and then we just return the times 10. So at the moment, I'm not, um, I'm not saving the results. I'm just printing them. Like I'm just printing the output of the function. Like it's not being saved as an intermediate variable or anything. And this is what it outputs. Um, but if you do save it, um, Yeah, so you, sorry, you save this as a variable um, and then you still see the outputs and stuff because they're being printed. But what I wanted to do was show that inside this, like inside this result, you just got minus 20 because it's like, it's not capturing it, right? It just, at the moment, it just, does all the stuff uh, and you don't you don't know what was sent to the user or you don't know what what the user saw and um, so that stuff gets lost so you add quietly so you make a quietly function and you call it f quiet um and then like the other adverbs the the they work well with map um so we've got this list and it's one two minus one um and we go over with the quiet function and you see you've got like this list again. So you've got the result, the output, the warnings, the messages. And then for the next, you get the result, the output, the warnings, the messages, you've got the result, the output, the warnings, the messages. Um, and it just, like the result is just what it should be. So it's one times 10, two times 10, and then minus one times 10. Um, and you can log that stuff. So you're capturing all of this stuff, which I think, yeah, if you're sending outward stuff out to users might be really useful. Um, but a warning is that if you try to do F quiet on zero, um, where I put in this thing, it's like, if it equals zero, stop, to, to like bring up an error, you, you just get an error message. Um, now in my mind, I was thinking, okay, can you safely and quietly, so, <laughs> You get another like nicely named function called f underscore safe underscore quiet and you wrap your quiet function um around like inside safely so you wrapped a different function inside quietly and then you wrap that function inside safely and um, feed in this this thing so f safe quiet zero so that's going to raise an error because it's going to get into f quiet which raises an error whenever there's a zero in the input. Um, and inside the result, so the result forms well, um, we've got an error thing. So I think, let's have a look, but I'm pretty sure it's um, inside this result, or oh, F quiet is not. Inside this result, okay, that, that gives the error and you've got, result error but if you've got result this should be null i guess um because it said before for safely it's like safely if we look at what safely did safely did that thing again where it says okay i'm going to give you a list of results and errors so you've got a safely and a quietly thing now i suppose like kind of kind of uh defeats the point of using quietly because you won't have if you do on something that works, I didn't think to try this, but if you go F safe quiet on like two. Ah, okay, no, you do. That is good. Um, ah, yeah, sorry, I did actually. <laughs> I need to start reading what I put next. Um, but yeah, if you if it does actually work inside your result, like the first thing you've got, like this is your result from safely this this result here or like this result and it has a result inside it which has another result inside it and that's like the result from the quietly function uh it's like it's not ideally named if you do wrap these together but it will store like this is from safely like this error goes up with this result and it puts out like the result the output the warnings the messages so it's like you get the best of both worlds but I did feel as I was doing this, it's like nobody wants to work with this output, I'd guess. Um, so it's kind of like a irrelevant 
by like afterthought but you can you can map them together um and yeah <laughs> okay so you've got this list uh let's actually run next i like the look of how this looks in in r it's like nobody in their right mind is going to want to work with this like that's just not it's not a fun fun data structure to work with um okay so it did work and um, like you say it's getting a little bit bit nasty so there's this next function um which is insistently and all of these functions before what they're doing is like helping you avoid errors um oh, sorry let's just just quietly have the otherwise no just the function um okay so like they're helping you avoid errors or they're logging the side effects of successful functions but what insistently does is it, it's going to retry it's like i know you want to do this i'm going to help you do this even if there's an error like i've got your back um and it takes three inputs so the first is f and i'm just going to check that it actually is f instead of dot f that's in, yeah okay it's, it is f this time um i guess it's because it doesn't take ellipsis as inputs that it's not a dot f um but yeah so your function which is going to get modified and then a rate object like which we uh we haven't looked at yet um and then quiet which is should i print out the errors or should i just hide them all like so you don't have to see them um the the rate objects are interesting because they are a different part of the uh, kind of reference. Um, they sit in here. There's another one because there's rate back off, rate delay, rate reset, rate sleep. Um, and if you're familiar with APIs and stuff, like rate back off is an exponential back off. So um, they all have their own different arguments, but that's like you you get an error from the API. It says, okay, at first I'm going to wait like 0.001 seconds or whatever. And then that's going to either increase randomly or it's going to increase by a multiplier. I'm going to keep checking, but I'm going to wait a bit longer every time or whatever you'd like to tell me to do. Rate delay. I'm not even, I don't know the difference between rate sleep and rate delay, but I would guess there along those lines rate like wait a certain amount of time then try again um but i don't want to say anything that's completely outright false about these because i only learned about them today um but yeah so we have this function um and what this is doing okay so it's generating a random number um just one random number between say zero and one um in this case, because we're inputting like zero as the default value. But if you change these values, it changes, right? And it says, well, okay, if the um, if the output of this random number is less than 0 0.9, which it's going to be like nine times out of 10, um, then stop, cause an error message and say that this is too small. Um, and what you could do is... Uh, you try to run this, uh, right, and you get an error because, yeah, it's like that number that you just gave me, 0.113, is way too small because you want stuff that's uh, 0.9 or bigger. Um, but if you have uh, your rate, so you in you like instantiate this, which is with the rate back or function which from uh, you put in these parameters. It says, like, okay, you're going to try maximum 10 times. Um, the minimum you're going to try is 0 0.005 and the base is 0 0.1. So I think it's just generating random numbers, something off this, but would have to check that. Um, but anyway, you say, okay, take that risky run if function that I had before, uh, wrap it inside insistently so that now I've got my insistently risky run if. Um, inside insistently put my risky run if function, um, put the rate object that I just instantiated uh, and print me the errors when I get them. So when we run this function, it says, okay, first time, um, like you put 0.6, uh, that's too small. So I'm now waiting 0.19 seconds. Um, 
And then I'm trying again. And I tried again. And you tried to put 0.26 for you. And then that's also too small. So I'm going to try again. And then you get 0.8 and you're nearly there. But that's also too small. Um, and now it really waits a long time, 0.78 seconds. And it like it succeeds. You get the result. Um, and that's handy. Like that's, you can imagine, I think you can kind of imagine a world where you put, um, you put insistently on a lot of functions and just let stuff run in the background via the command line or if you're hitting APIs. Um, I know at least in Python, there's packages like Tenacity um, that implement this exponential back off. Um, I don't know, do you guys, do you guys use them much? Like do you have to interact with APIs? Yeah, I, I interact with APIs, but nothing where I'm, I've run into this this problem. I've used set dot sleep, but this is just so much nicer. <laughs> yeah, see that you you say, but I do that. I use my own sleeps always. I don't know. It's like wait one second. Um, but yeah, this is this is um, is more robust, and it won't always wait a second. So it probably is better in the long run. So it's pretty cool. Um. And it's just nice, like you could set max times to a thousand or whatever. Like if you just really don't want your thing to stop running, you just leave it for a month and it will, it will eventually do the thing you need to do as long as the API comes back. Um, okay, so slowly, uh, I didn't necessarily see so much value in this. I, I don't think I really understood why slowly exists, but I was also getting to the point where I didn't have long left. Um, so if anyone if anyone does know uh, like really why slowly exists, then feel free to, to interject and to say. Um, but you take the same, the same inputs as insistently. Uh, you do some stuff and yeah, it will wait. Rate delay. Oh, it doesn't keep trying when it meets an error. Yeah. But I think if it didn't meet an error, it would wait for the next call of like, okay, I guess that's why it's useful. It's like you're doing something you can only send a request every, so you can send 10,000 requests every minute or whatever. You keep track of your request that you've sent in that minute. Um, and you see you've got 10 seconds left. So like you just put in your function, like whenever that count is at 10,000, like look at the time left till they reset and then don't hit the API until then. But I guess, yeah, I still don't, I'm not hundred percent sure on why that one exists, like beyond just using sleep. So let's, let's reread. Well, so, so am I right? I, I guess the only difference then there is that, uh, Insistently reacts based on errors, so you'd have to have your function error somehow, or prepare to keep on. Like I guess the, can you can you our, our example like um, pinging the like API endpoint, let's say. Whereas with slowly, it's just um, you're not reacting to an error, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're doing it like proactively kind of thing. Something like that, yeah. It's like you know that it needs to wait for something. I don't know. Maybe you know like. So I've, I've got like a use case like where we're like downloading some data that's being prepared on a server and, and, and basically mm -hmm. like, you know, Again, I, I've kind of got like the set, or like the sleep type stuff set up in some uh, packages that I've I, I've got. But you know, it's like uh, for hitting the endpoints on this kind of server. But basically, you know, we'll inquire about the status of of data being prepared, and then the API will basically give us some indication of status, right? So it's 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 not an error; it just gives us indication of status. And then, kind of, I have some script that will say, okay, well wait a little bit and then wait a little bit more and wait a little bit more depending on you know how many times i have to wait or something like that mm -hmm. um i mean I guess maybe this would be a case 
potentially for safely where i mean i don't i don't know the fixed amount but i could use oh no it's uh, uh or, or um um or rather i said safely i meant slowly Slowly, um yeah where i could still have the rate object um so mm -hmm. i could get kind of the same behavior as consistently but here i just know that it's a process it's a long running process and i i would need like this this i would need per just to wait Yeah, like like you said, if that you know the server, say if it's a stock ticker or something, you know it updates only every five seconds. It's like hit it, then wait five seconds, hit it, wait. Um, I think you can do. I think it's like it's, but it will if it errors, it won't deal with the error. Um, so it's it is like insistently in that it keeps this rate object, but it won't do the nice thing insistently does unless you make it. Where So there, I... you'd have to have the uh, sl uh, slowly, insistently, or insistently slowly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like it's some nice function names going on with like these things. Um, okay, we, we are we're nearing the end. I I kind of have to dash at seven because I've got a swim club thing. Um, not like half an hour away. Um, at half seven, so I got to get my skates on at seven. Um. Or I would dwell a bit more, I think, on these on slowly and insistently. Um, but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, right, so I I put some examples together. Um, and I was doing this like sequentially, but basically what Compose does, um, we'll, we'll tackle Compose today and then we'll stop. And then that gives me a bit more time to look at partial because that was the really interesting one, I think. Um, But like what Compose does is it allows you to put two functions together. Um, and I, I had some really basic examples, but when I was reading afterwards, I saw some much better examples, um, which I'd like to go back to, I suppose, next week. Um, but you, you input the functions that you want to bring together in the ellipsis. So you can have like more than two if you want. I, I don't know how many, obviously, have more than one um but then the direction says well like okay um which one goes first should i do the function that you put in first first or should i read from the back and essentially what it does is like do this then do that then do that one then do that one and it's just a shorthand for bringing those together um and so i guess you can also reduce syntax so this is why i was thinking i've seen people put other ways of doing not in with like with this thing but you can just compose the negation so it flips like the truth value of a predicate and uh, where a predicate is something that returns true or false um and in is a predicate so it says like, okay is x um not in there and well that's false because x is in there um is X not in this one? Okay, well, that's true. Um, but like the times that's going to actually be useful is when you're doing something like this, but with the not in, if you like, like filter, which is getting rid of rows based on a truth condition being true or not. I would like always do this before. I'd write like, say, um, you've got like a data frame. And you go, you're looking for some stuff like some text that doesn't have that. I would be like, okay, um, bad word. Like, don't find anything that has bad word in it, in text. So get rid of all of the rows by filter. Um, but you don't need to do that if you instantiate string undetect, or like don't detect as that thing. So like compose this again. Oh, didn't realize, but you can do it with the symbols or the speech marks. I wonder if that's right. Yeah, seems that it is. But I didn't actually realize that as I was doing, I think this one is copied from an example. And this one was what I was trying to think of. Um, but okay, yeah. So like, don't detect delete means like from this vector x, which is just keep and delete. Um, so two rows, do not keep the one. So <laughs> it's a bit convoluted, but like get rid of the one that has delete in it. So you've still got keep. Um, And then this is kind of what we were talking about before, after, or like you were talking about, it's like adding in the error handling to a function. Um, I didn't quite get to do what I wanted to here. I was still putting this together. Um, 
but yeah, you can you can do that uh, in nice ways. Like, so you've got the square root, um, and the square root is only defined when x is zero or greater. So check, like, um, compose these together. Try to take the square root and validate that it's positive i guess in this one you want to read it backwards um so you want to validate positive first and then do square root um but yeah you you can see like you could put them together and you could do things um that wouldn't have been possible before uh that let me say i think we should aim to next week look at Compose, negate, partial, auto browser, and misc. Where are they gone? Where's it gone? Um, because in misc, you've got, we could look more at like these rates. And the progress bars are really simple, but like these things, too, I honestly don't know what they are. Um, <laughs> but yeah, next week, we could look at whoever presents over it to me or someone else spending more time on compose, like looking at some cooler examples because i actually think it's really worth dwelling on compose and partial um and we'll endeavor to revisit anything from last week that wasn't fully covered um but yeah i think that's it um does anyone know how to get the chat up on this new zoom okay i'm gonna end